in this latest episode of What's New in iOS, SharePlay goes on hiatus, and there's a whole bunch of new Safari changes, changes that I think you may enjoy for the better. Here's what's new in iOS 15 Beta 6. So one of the most noteworthy characteristics of iOS 15 Beta 6 is actually what the release doesn't include. As you may have heard, SharePlay has been removed from the iOS beta and actually won't appear in the initial iOS 15 public release. So once iOS 15 releases to the public, SharePlay will not be a part of that. Presumably SharePlay will return in something like an iOS 15.1 beta, and then it will be released to the public. And as you can see here, SharePlay has been removed from FaceTime and FaceTime settings. Kind of disappointing since SharePlay was definitely one of the top five features in iOS 15. Of course, ID cards will not be released with the initial iOS 15 beta. The app privacy report also won't be available initially at the iOS 15 public launch. And there are several other features that appear to be delayed or won't make the initial cut for iOS 15's launch. That includes custom email domains. We haven't seen a sign of that just yet. Detailed 3D CarPlay navigation. And another top five feature, hasn't been seen just yet, and that is universal control. Still holding out hope for that one though. Now to be fair for Apple, usually every year there's some feature that doesn't make the cut and is released later on in like a point one release. But SharePlay is definitely a flagship feature. Like it is one of the main uh, features in my opinion that people are looking forward to. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. And I'd say the same thing goes for universal control as well, although not as important as SharePlay given the environment we've lived in for the last year and a half with COVID. Again, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. But iOS 15 beta 6 does include quite a few changes for, you guessed it, Safari. So Apple must be a big fan of Waffle House because they've waffled back and forth many times on the design and the direction of Safari's address bar. Now, there has been a lot of contention about the design of the revamped address bar in the previous versions of iOS 15. And honestly, I think this version right here is a good compromise. You have the address bar at the bottom of the, of the interface. It's still touch enabled. However, you can see you have dedicated buttons just like you normally had in Safari on iOS 14 and below. Uh, so on the right side, you see beta five, you see that combined address bar, it's kind of fat, and it basically combines everything into one bar, uh, which is a definite point of contention for sure. For instance, the share button did so much of the heavy lifting, basically everything was just jammed under the share button, even things that weren't really related traditionally to sharing. Like you had things like privacy report under your share button or request desktop website, stuff that really just didn't belong there. Whereas here on beta six, Apple isn't requiring the address bar to wear so many hats. Basically it's giving you your traditional bottom toolbar along with the benefits of the updated address bar. And honestly, I think this is a good decision. I like it particularly because it's easy to access the address bar to type in a search term, whatever the case may be, you can do so because the address bar is located at the bottom of the interface, which is so nice, makes it easy. If you have a larger iPhone like this iPhone 12 Pro Max, you don't have to stretch your thumb all the way to the top of the interface. No, the address bar is right at the bottom. And if you scroll on the page, you'll notice that everything sort of just hides out of the way. You still have the name of the website, the URL, uh, the condensed URL, but I like the animation, how it hides both the address bar and the, the toolbar at the bottom of the interface, just like that. Really nice looking animation. What do you guys think? Do you like this compromise? Cause I think it's a compromise. Apple obviously reverted back a little bit or backtrack a little bit because there was such an outrage over Safari's design. But here's what's really interesting. You see that little A button there? If you tap that, you'll notice a brand new option that allows you to show top address bar. So you can actually almost revert back to how Safari looked in iOS 14 by tapping show top address bar and all of your other stuff is in this menu as well. So it's been broken out of that share menu, which makes a lot more sense. But let's focus on that button at the top, show top address bar. I tap that and look what we have here. Everything's back to basically almost an iOS 14 style. Uh, so you have your address bar at the top 
it hides away when you scroll along with the toolbar at the bottom hides away when you scroll and then it comes back just like that so in other words you can go back to the classic mode quote unquote for safari if you choose to do so and you can do so without visiting settings or anything you simply tap the little a button and now i can go back show bottom bar like that and it reverts back to the updated newfangled way of navigation with safari so Personally, I think this way is the better way, and I'll show you why that is here in just a second. But again, easy to switch between the two. Which way do you prefer? Which method or layout do you prefer? Let me know what you guys think. Which one would you normally use on a regular basis? Now, the downside is that you don't get any of the gesture functionality that the updated Safari address bar allows. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So we're gonna go back to show bottom bar. Now, here with this design, it allows you to swipe on the address bar to linearly swipe between different tabs, just like you can swipe between different apps by swiping on the little home indicator at the bottom of your iPhone. By the way, check out our friends over at Connect the Watts. Go visit their YouTube channel and subscribe. Sister site to 9 to 5 Mac. Just want to plug that in right there. But back to what I was saying, among several of the reasons why I prefer the bottom bar is because it allows for these gestures to quickly swipe between tabs. To me, that's something that's super convenient and you don't get that when having the bar at the top. But that's not the only gesture that you get swiping between different tabs. You can also create a brand new tab by swiping over to the last tab and then swiping to the left again. See that little plus button there? Notice that little plus button. It's gonna pop into view like that and create a brand new tab for you on your start page so you can quickly get to your favorite websites, perform a new search, enter a new URL, whatever you want to do. So let me put the address bar back to the top of the screen and just briefly demonstrate that you lose your gesture ability there. So can't swipe between tabs. And if I swipe up here, nothing happens. So yeah, big disadvantage when you don't use the bottom address bar, but it doesn't stop there. You can actually swipe up on that address bar as well to enter your tab view, just like that. So this allows you to quickly view all of your tabs. You can of course swipe between tabs, swipe up to view all tabs, quickly tap on a tab you wanna to switch to, swipe over, swipe to the right, swipe to the left. Uh, it's just a really gesture driven interface when you use the updated Safari but it's better than the previous betas because you have these buttons broken out. So you can go back, forward, share, and share is share. It's not share plus a whole bunch of other unrelated things. No, it's typically what you would expect to find in the share menu is what you'll find here on beta six. You also have your dedicated bookmarks button and you have a tab button as well, just in case you don't wanna use gestures or in case you've docked your, your address bar at the top. But the cool thing is that when you tap bookmarks, it only takes up half the screen and then you can kind of swipe within that view as well for your history, for your reading list, and for your bookmarks, which is really cool. And of course you can expand it to make it full screen view as well, or swipe down to minimize, or just tap done to get rid of it. Now, because you have that dedicated bookmarks button, you no longer get the bookmark options when you long press on the address bar, but you do see voice search now, which is really cool. So you can just tap voice search to perform a quick voice search like this. Now another Safari change, which is a little bit more subtle, is the updated download indicator. So when I tap download here, you'll see that indicator appear right to the right of the A button in the status bar, and that appears on every single tab. And that download indicator is basically just an extension of the A button, so they're basically one and the same. So you tap on that area, it brings up all of your normal options, but in addition, you also have a download section. You can see one there indicating I have one download and then you can tap it to get the status of that download or tap the little magnifying glass to jump right to the files app where it's downloading that particular file. Now, if you move your address bar up to the top, the download indicator will appear there as well as expected. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff here. Now you will notice a preference panel update in iOS 15 beta 6 pertaining to Safari. And iPad OS beta users will recognize some similarities between the updated preferences here and in iPad OS. So you have an updated tab section, which basically allows you to toggle between tab bar and single tab view, uh, which basically means you're moving the tab either to the bottom 
or to the top based on your preferences. But the cool thing, you don't even have to visit settings because like I showed you earlier several times, you can do that right from Safari itself. Now you'll also notice a couple of additional options, the landscape tab bar. So that ap applies if you're using your iPhone in landscape mode, and then you have allow website tinting. So tinting used to be under an accessibility header, but now it's in the main tab section. And this is the tint that appears at the top of the interface to match the website. But that will of course depend on if the website supports that. Now here is the landscape tab bar enabled, allowing you to switch between your various tabs seeing the favicons, the name of the tab, and of course you can still view all of your tabs simply by tapping the tab button like that. But if you don't like the landscape tab bar, you can easily go back to the preferences and disable that. So let's go ahead and do that. Swipe back over, and now you see it's gone. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Definitely disappointing to lose share play, but I do love these updated Safari changes. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thumbs up if you appreciated this video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.